In this video, I'm going to show you how to create basic shapes using Adobe Illustrator. If Adobe doesn't look like this for you, you can go to Window, Workspace, and make sure Essentials is clicked on. That way, it'll set up the toolbars and palettes to look like this. First thing we're going to do is draw a rectangle by clicking and dragging. So I'm going to click on the Rectangle tool and just click and drag and draw a rectangle. If you want to change the size of this rectangle, you can go to the Properties tab, and you can see the width and height. You can also see the position, and you can change this. Uh, there are two different options you can do. This one, if you click on this to look like Link, this will link the width and the height. So if I change the width to, let's say, 3, watch what happens to the height. It also changes, so it keeps the same proportions but scales both the height and width at the same time. I'm going to make this unlinked so I can change each one independently. I can make this one centimeter high and three centimeters across. Let's make it two to match. Okay, that's the first shape. Now you can also, so instead of clicking and dragging to make a rectangle, you can just click at a spot and type in the dimensions this way. So I'll make this 2 by 1.5 centimeters. I just type those numbers in and hit the return. So there we go. Um, now if you want to draw a square, instead of just trying to eyeball it, um, you could go until you see the diagonal line that shows you that it's a square, or I'm going to hold the Shift key down. And if I hold the Shift key down, I can't. it, it forces me to draw a square. So that's holding the shift key down. We're going to change the tool. So this right now is a rectangle tool, but if I go to the corner, click and hold, or just click once, I can change this to the ellipse tool, and we could make an ellipse. Again, I'll click and drag to make an ellipse. Or likewise, you could have just clicked and type in, and type in the values for your ellipse right here. And delete that one. Another tool here, if I click on the little corner, click and hold, I get a polygon tool. And here, if you start drawing, it's going to start drawing a hexagon. Um, by the way, the shift key would con kind of constrains things to be like 45 degree angles. That's how kind of made this, this square. Um, I'm going to hold the shift key down now, and it's kind of forcing things to be horizontal here. Okay, so I'm still holding my mouse down. And if I want to make it so it's not a hexagon, I can hit the up and down arrows to change the number of faces. So I hit the down arrow a couple uh, I hit the down arrow to make this a pentagon instead of a hexagon. By the way, if you're done with any tool, you can click back on the arrow to do things like move, drag and move. Let's do the same thing and make a six-pointed star. Hold this down, go to the star tool, start drawing. In this case, it, it st started as a six-pointed star anyway, but the same process, you can use up and down arrows to change the number of stars, star points. Um, the next task is going to be to change these objects to be the same color and stroke as the objects on the right. So I'm going to click on the main tool, main selection tool, and let's make this object red with a green outline. So you can go to the right and hit the appearance and click in there and make the fill a red. And you can click the, let's click away and click on the stroke color and make that a green outline. The green outline is very narrow now, so we can make the green outline a little bit bigger. Let's make it three points th instead. Of, okay, so that's that. Um, I have a mistake here, but let's um, let me move this a little bit forward. Yours won't look like this. I'll fix the mistake before you see it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, bring this to the front. This thing is in front of the other one now. And I want to make it so that you can see the outline is blue, but that it does not have a fill. So I'm going to make the fill, and if I hit the slash mark, it's not going to be filled at all. 
And so now there's no fill and you only have the stroke outline color that you set. And we'll do the same thing, make it a little bit bigger. So now you can see through this. By the way, when you try to move this object, if I try to click in the middle to move it, I, I can't. I have to click on the, the edge itself to move it. I'll hit Command Z to undo that change. So if you want to type in text, click on the text tool and click someplace and start typing. Now, this is not the size that I want. If I change the size here, this won't change what's going on. It'll change what I type next. I made the, those text, that text bigger, but that's not what I wanted to do. You can, you can do two things. You can either select all the text. Oh, that didn't work. Uh, let's not even do it that way. You could, well, you could just select all the text and now change the size. Let's make that, looks like that's 24. Okay, I'll hit Command Z to make that small again, um, just to undo that change. Or you can just use the selection tool, select the whole text, and now it'll select everything so you can change the size of that. So there you go. Now we'll use the pen tool to draw some straight line segments. So the pen tool, I clicked on that, and I'm just gonna click, 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 and this is a problem because how do you stop drawing? I wanna stop drawing here. So you have to hit the escape key, and that stops you drawing. You notice also that it's filled. Um, I did not join this, I did not want this to be a polygon, so, but I still made it filled anyway. So this, talk, this is a good, way to t good time to talk about other ways to change the stroke and fill. Actually, it's backwards. I have no stroke, but I have it filled. Let's, I want it switched around, so I can go over here to this little arrow, and it'll swap them. It'll make the fill nothing and the outline black. So that, that worked, and now this is just drawn in black. Let's use the pen tool again. And Again, the shift key, I clicked once. The shift, I'm holding the shift key down now, and you notice that it's either, it's, it's being constrained to 45 degree angles, horizontal, or vertical lines. So this, this helps if you're trying to draw things which are uh, pretty rectangular, or, or um, re, re, that um, you want things straight. Otherwise, it's pretty hard to draw things straight. You can use some of the guides to do that as well. Okay, the, the next time, we'll use the pen tool again. This time we'll draw a shape. I'm gonna hold the shift key down to make it once again so it's easy to draw. Oops, I did that wrong. Let's start here. I, held the, I hit the escape key accidentally. Click, click, click. And I'm holding the shift key down so it's drawing this at a 45 degree angle. And there we go. Um, once I connect it, you notice I didn't, you didn't have to hit escape to stop drawing. And it connects it and it finishes the path. If you wanted to, you could change the stroke and uh, fill to match this, but let's just, oh, let's, let's change the color here, give it some, some interest. Okay, we're not gonna spend much time on curves. This pen tool is really powerful. Mostly I just wanted to show you click, click, click to draw straight line segments. But let's, I'll show you one curve here. I'm gonna click, and now here, I'm gonna come up here a little bit, and I'm gonna click and drag. I'm, click, I'm holding mouse key down still, and I'm dragging. This kind of defines the curve that's gonna be at that spot, and I just clicked there, and then I clicked there. Okay, and let's I hit escape now to stop drawing, and let's um, make the fill nothing. Okay, so what, what happened up here, by the way, this first selection tool will select the whole object. The next selection tool will show you all the different vertices that make up this object. So if I click on this, you can see that there's, these are handles that'll change how the curve comes into and out of that point. This, shows the tangent line and where the curve is coming. And the longer this is, the more gradual it, gradually it comes into that vertex. There's gonna be more on that later and that's a pretty uh, high powered tool. That'll be it for now.